Hi, my name is Chris. I'm a senior software developer. I'm going to show you my Ada setup. Ada is an open source command line tool for AI driven development. I'll show you my setup, configuration, and I'll give you some tips for how to get the most out of it. You can find Ada at ada.chat. Let's start with a quick demo of using Ada to generate some code. You can use Ada to edit any language. JavaScript and Python are popular choices, but I think it's useful to show it working with a niche language like ClojureScript as well. I've got four files here, index.html, main.cljs, style.css, and conventions.md. I'll get to conventions.md in a minute. Main.cljs is my main file. Let's take a look. So here we have a basic ClojureScript front-end project. You can see the result rendered in the browser here. We start Ada supplying the names of the files we want it to edit. This no git flag is because I don't have git set up in this project yet. So the first thing to notice here is it picked up my Anthropic API key. It can also use OpenAI and other models. Because I've supplied an Anthropic key, it defaults to Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is the latest at this time. Because we're not using git, the repo map feature has been disabled. Normally, Ada will give the LLM an idea of your git repo with the repo map. And you can see here it's added the three files to the chat. It's also added this conventions file, which I'll talk about later. Let's go ahead and prompt it to create a basic calculator. And we hit return. A few moments later. And there we go. It's created a basic calculator app. Let's give it a test. 9 times 9 equals 81 plus 5 equals 86 divided by 2 equals 43. Works pretty well. You can see here Ada has output some information about what it did. And you can also see these diff type blocks. So the way Ada works is it asks the LLM to generate diffs on your existing code base. The LLM works pretty quickly, so you barely have time to read what it's actually doing. And we can take a look at the main file to see what's actually changed. So we can see it set up some state at the start here. It's got a calculate function and a bit of UI here, which it's laid out. It's also added some nice styles to give the buttons rounded corners and things like that. Take a quick look at the styles here, and we see that it's created this calculator class in the style.css and some other classes for making things look good. Overall, it's a pretty solid calculator implementation in ClojureScript, which would have probably taken me an hour, but the LLM generated it in a matter of seconds. Something to note is because my ClojureScript is live reloading, the moment that Ada modified the files on disk, they live reloaded into the running app in the browser, which makes for a very efficient workflow. So now that I've shown you how Ada works, let's talk about the features that make Ada useful. The first thing is that it's IDE agnostic. It works with your existing tools and workflows, in my case, Vim and ClojureScript. It's command line driven, which is great for people who are used to working on the command line in Linux, Mac, or Windows subsystem for Linux. Ada gives you a choice of different LLMs. You can basically hook it up to anything with an OpenAI compatible API. In my case, it's using Claude, but other LLMs are available too. Ada works really well with live reloading. Because it just modifies the files on disk, and most live reloading systems simply wait for files to change, as soon as Ada changes anything, they're hot loaded into the browser if you have hot loading set up. And finally, Ada is fairly simple to install, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Now let's look at some tips for using Ada, and I'll show you my config. So the first thing I've done is turn off auto commits and some Git integration features. I found it really annoying how Ada would automatically commit and write commit messages for me. I'd far rather have a human in the loop, and I want to modify code and test things before code gets committed to the Git repo. So that's what auto commits false does. Auto lint true means that the code will be linted first and the LLM will be told of any errors, which it can then fix. In general, I find that any extra feedback for the LLM is good. Passing it linter errors or other errors is generally a good idea. Finally, let's talk about this setting, read conventions.md. This is a really neat feature where Ada will send the file conventions.md or whatever you specify inside read automatically to the LLM. What this means is in a project, you can have a file called conventions.md and every time that context will be used when you're prompting the LLM. For working with a niche language like ClojureScript, this is super useful. For example, here's the conventions markdown file that I used for the demo I just showed you. The LLM has been given some general guidance. It's been told how to use ClojureScript and React and specifically the Skittle library. It's been told how to interop with JavaScript, and it's been given a lot of example code. I also told it how to use the concrete.css framework that does the styling in this demo. I also want to show you this super cool prompting trick where you can prompt with images. Let's start with a fresh ClojureScript front-end project. Now what I'm going to do is ask Ada to duplicate an existing component that I found on the web. So let's take this ratings and reviews section here. I'd like to have a similar thing in my app. So I'm going to take a screenshot. So I'll copy that. And now in my Ada session, I'm just going to say paste. As you can see, it's pasted the clipboard image to chat. Now I'm going to type a prompt, please. So I've said, please implement what you see in clipboard image.png as a simple reagent component. Let's run that. 
And there we go, it's done. Now, if you ask me, that's not too bad. It's not exactly the same as the original, but it has all the main parts laid out and fairly correct. If we take a look at the code here, you can see it's created a rating section component and some subcomponents for different parts. There's a rating bar there. It's also updated style.css to support those new parts of the component it added. This is a really fast way to get new pieces of UI into your app. So now I want to talk about some general tips for working with LLMs when generating code. The first thing to note is that LLMs are literally stochastic statistical autocompletes. So it's best to treat it as an autocomplete and edit the code yourself and verify things by reading the code yourself. The second thing is, I think it's unreasonable to expect the AI to be able to do better than a human. Humans are almost never zero shot prompted and have it run straight away. Humans need context, documentation, and they need to work iteratively, modifying the code, running it, and then updating the code. That's literally how a REPL works, the read, eval, print loop. And I think it makes sense to put an LLM in a loop with humans and with the ability to test and run code itself so that it can fix any errors and do things iteratively like a human does. So now let's take a look at how you install Ada. Ada is a Python program and you can install it with pip. I highly recommend doing this inside a Python virtual environment. I'm using durenv and I have an mvrc with pyenv layout set up. So Ada is installed in an isolated directory. You can also symlink the Ada binary from where it is on disk to your bin directory. And that's why I can just call Ada from the command line wherever I like. Once you have a virtual environment set up to contain Ada, you just pip install Ada install. You can then run Ada install. A few moments later. Actually, that takes ages. And there we go. It's installed the executable Ada and it's even put it in the local bin path, which is on my path. After that, you can type Ada help to get started. The main piece of configuration is the YAML file. And I showed you what I think are sensible defaults before. There are also a bunch of environment variables you can set. In my case, I have the OpenAI key, Anthropic key, OpenRouter API key. I found that OpenRouter was useful for switching between LLMs and avoiding getting rate limited. So if you find you're getting rate limited by OpenAI or Anthropic, try using OpenRouter, which is a wrapper around various LLMs including both of those. In general, at this point in time, I've found that Anthropic produces better code, but I'm sure that'll change over time. And I'm particularly interested in running local models on my own machine. Hopefully that'll be a possibility soon. So the last thing I wanted to show you was this Ada convention scraper script. Before I showed you the conventions file, which is very useful for giving context to an LLM. Sometimes there's an existing piece of documentation online and you just want to take that piece of documentation and pass it to the LLM in a useful way. What this script can do is take a URL, read over the documentation and summarize it in a format that's useful for the LLM and create a convention file. For example, let's say we want to get Ada to write a script which uses the Mastodon API. We can go to the Mastodon API documentation page here. Then we can run the Ada convention scraper and pass it the URL of that documentation. Ada will go ahead and download the documentation and then summarize it. I'll post the gist address where you can get that script under the video. Finally, the Ada website itself is a useful resource, as is the Ada GitHub. And if you or your team need commercial support, setting things up and getting them integrated, you can find my website at mccormick.cx. Feel free to get in contact. So that's my Ada setup in a nutshell. Thanks very much for watching.